So this video, we're going to go into the electronic structure of atoms and look at the Aufbau principle and a couple of other rules as well to keep in mind when we're looking at the, the structure of the electrons in different elements. So let's just start very basically of what we, we should know from junior school. We have uh, a nucleus and orbiting around that nucleus we have a series of shells where the electrons are located. Uh, now, we should know also from junior school that when we fill in the shells, we start on the inner shell, we put two, we move to the next shell, or we can only hold two on that first shell, we move to the second, and we can fit six on the second shell, and so forth. So we know that we fill from the inner shell working towards the outer shell. We also should know that these shells, so the first shell I've drawn here, this guy on the inside corresponds to the first row of the periodic table. The second shell corresponds to the second row of the periodic table. So all of the elements in the second row have two electron shells. Okay, so what we're going to start talking about now is the fact that we can eat, well, each of these shells, one, two, all the way through to seven on the periodic table, all of our seven shells are made up of subshells and orbitals, which we'll talk about in a second. Let's just have a look at this periodic table that I've put in here. This is now broken up into the uh, different blocks, so to speak, of the periodic table. We have the S, P, D, and F block. Uh, and I'll put this one in here just so, makes it a little bit easier to see what we're doing for this particular video, but it's a very similar structure to your normal periodic table. The only difference is we've got helium over here rather than over in the final column there where it should be. So we've got helium over in the S block. Everything else should look pretty, uh, pretty familiar. Okay, so let's have a look at our subshells to start with. So our first, second, all the way through to seven, our seven shells, they're all made up of these subshells. And the subshells are the S, P, D, and F subshells. You don't have to know about all of these different shapes. Um, but what you need to understand is that each of those shells, all seven of them, can be made up of these subshells here. Some of them have all of them, some of them have one of them, some of them have two of them. And we'll talk about which ones do, which ones don't, and how to work that out in a second. So all of the shells are made up of these S, P, D, and F subshells. Now, each of these subshells has what we call orbitals. Now, the orbitals would be these different shapes you see here. So the S subshell only has one orbital here. Uh, the P subshell, we've got three orbitals. One, two, and three. D, we've got five. And the F subshell we have seven orbitals. So what are these orbitals? Uh, we'll have a look at this point we have written up here. Scientists use maths, so quantum mechanics, to model where electrons are most likely to be found. So if you look at these shapes here, we can say with 90, 90 or 95% certainty that if we wanted to look for an electron, that's where we'd find it. So it's, a, it's a, an, an area of probability that you're likely to find an electron. That's what these different shapes orbitals mean. We don't have to get into the nuts and bolts of these shapes. <clears throat> All you have to know at the moment is we have seven shells that correspond to our seven rows of the periodic table. Those, are, those shells are made up of subshells, and the subshells are S, P, D, and F. And each of those subshells has what we call orbitals, where we find our electrons. So let's have a look at how many electrons we can find in these different orbitals. And we'll drop down to this bottom right diagram down here. We're going, and unfortunately, this diagram is in the reverse order of the periodic table. So you'll just have to keep that in mind. We're going to start down here where it says first. First is here at the top, our first row of the periodic table. So this is our first shell, our main energy level, which we know about already, our first shell. It has because it's quite small, only one subshell. It only has the S subshell. So we're, we're using notation, we'd call that one S. So level one, S subshell. Now, if you have a look on the right here, we know that all of these orbitals can hold two electrons. So we can only fit the one S subshell on the first level, and it can hold two electrons. So therefore we have a total here, on our first energy level, or the first row of the periodic table, total of two electrons. Let's have a look at the, the second level, which is our second row of the periodic table. So starting with lithium, um, it's getting a little bit larger. So we can actually fit two of these subshells on the second main level here. So we have an S and a P subshell. And if you look to the right over here, we can see that the S subshell 
can only hold two. So we have two electrons here in that S subshell. And the P subshell can hold, has three orbitals, each with two electrons. So we have a total of six that can fit into the uh, P subshell there. That gives us a total of eight electrons available uh, on the second row of the periodic table or the second main energy level. Just quickly, let's go to the periodic table from what we've just done there and have a look to see how that works out with the periodic table. So first row of the periodic table, we have the S subshell and it has two electrons. Does that make sense? Well, let's have a look first row up the top here. Yes, it does. We have the S subshell uh, and we can fit two electrons, which would be helium, uh, sorry, hydrogen and helium. So there we go. So that's our first level S subshell, two electrons. Now, if we go back down to the second, our second main energy level, that would be the second row of the periodic table. Now, according to this diagram at the bottom, we have an S and a P subshell. So we would have our 2s here with our two electrons, lithium, beryllium, and then our 2p would be over here on the p block, and it has three orbitals holding six electrons, one electron for each six of these elements you can see here from boron through to neon. So everything over here in green in this p block, right, we call, this is our p subshell. It has three orbitals that hold two electrons. So you can see this p block these rows are made up of six elements for our six electrons in the P subshell. If we go back to our S block over here on the left, the blue one, the turquoise looking one, the S subshell can only hold two electrons. So that would make up the first two groups of the periodic table. And then our transition metals are in, well, they're filling up their D subshell, which we'll get to soon. And then the lanthanides and actinides are filling up the F sublevel down here, which we'll get to later as well. Uh, just quickly before we move on, let's have a look at our third row of the periodic table here and just see if this pattern is holding. So we have, uh, oh, now we've got, a, we've got our S and P, okay, and we're now including a D subshell. Now the D subshell can hold 10 uh, electrons and there are five orbitals in that D subshell. So let's have a look at the periodic table and see if that makes sense. So let's have a look at our third level. We have a S, which is correct. We've got S here, so 3S2. <clears throat> then we've got our 3P. Does that make sense? We'll go over here. Yes, it does. 3P6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 through to argon. So we've got our 3P6. <clears throat> Excuse me. What about 3D? So we should have a D subshell on the third level, <clears throat> doesn't appear. Looking at the periodic table, I can't see uh, the D block does not exist on the third level. Well, we'll talk about why that is in a second, but think about everything here from scandium, 21, <clears throat> excuse me, through to zinc. They're filling up their 3D uh, subshell, which would kind of be out here somewhere. Uh, so it would go 3S, 3P, then we should probably be filling up our 3D. So why does it appear in the fourth row of the periodic table? We'll start talking about that in a second when we look at the alpha principle and a few other principles too on how to write out this electronic structure. So the alpha principle is the first principle we're going to look at when we look at filling in our shells and subshells. Alpha just means building up. So the order of filling of electrons into these shells and subshells must be from the lowest energy first, uh, as described by the Aufbau principle. Very simply, like we do in junior school where we have uh, our first shell and we put two electrons on it, we fill up the first row, which would be hydrogen and helium. And then we go to our second shell. We only fit two on the first one and we can fit eight electrons. What have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight electrons on the next shell. Well, it's pretty similar, except we're actually gonna start looking a little bit closer at the subshells and orbitals. But it's the same deal. You start on the inside and you work your way out. Once you fill up the second uh, shell, which is row two of the periodic table, well then obviously you put in a third shell. And we would start filling in those electrons. But we're gonna look at this uh, a little bit more closely now and refer to sh uh, subshells and orbitals as we go. So if we were to look at the periodic table here and we've got our S, P, D and F blocks all lined up. Um, remember helium should be 
over here, but in this case it's in our S block. Anything in this S block here, the first two columns, first two groups of the periodic table, they're in the process of filling up their S subshell. Anything in the D block is in the process of filling up its D subshell. Anything in the P block is filling up the P subshell, and then obviously your lanthanides and actinides down here, they're in the process of filling up their F subshell. So let's look at the order of filling. The order of filling you can think of mathematically as N plus L, and let's have a look at what that actually means. Down at this diagram in the bottom right, down in here, along the bottom, our columns, so to speak, n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. They are the rows of the periodic table, the main energy levels or shells. Then you have a look at the rows above it and we've got our, these rows above, we've got our subshells S, P, D and F. Now if we ascribe a number to these subshells and here we've gone for 0, 1, 2, 3, we can look mathematically at the order of filling and why, when you get down to the transition metals in here, why our 3D block appears on the fourth row of the periodic table, which seems a little bit odd. But let's have a look at this mathematically. Remember, we need to fill from the lowest energy level uh, to the highest energy level. So N plus L is the order of filling, and we're looking for low values here to fill first. 1 plus 0 is 1, so obviously we're going to fill this part first, which is the 1s subshell. 2 plus 0 is 2, so that makes sense. After we've filled our electrons for hydrogen and helium, we go to the 2s subshell, which is lithium and beryllium, and we fill those. So it's not too dissimilar to the order of filling that we would have done in junior school. Now let's have a look at our, so on the second row of the periodic table, we actually have a p subshell now. So <clears throat> Excuse me, we've got an S and a P subshell. 2 plus 1 gives us 3. So we'll fill that one next, and that would be over here, that would be boron through to neon. 3 plus 0 is 3. So then we would drop down to our next main energy level, and we would fill in the two electrons here for the S subshell. Uh, let's have a look. We've got a P subshell on the third shell. So 3 plus 1 is 4. That would be in here. Aluminium through to argon. So we've filled up our six electrons there. Now have a look at what happens mathematically when we look at the uh, the energy levels here. When we look at this row, this column here, three plus two gives us a value of five for the 3D subshell. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you jump down on the periodic table to row four, potassium and calcium, which is here, four plus zero is four. So we have a 3D subshell with an energy value of 5, but the S subshell on the fourth row has a lower energy value here of 4. So when we do the order of filling, the Aufbau principle says we go from the lowest energy first, uh, and then with increasing energy levels, we, we can put more electrons in, so to speak. So after we've done 3P, you'd think we'd go straight down to 3D which is on the same electron shell. Well, we don't. We actually drop down and fill in our 4S subshell first. So we would do 4S2 for calcium, so to speak. Once we start hitting our transition metals here, we actually go back up and start filling in our 3D subshell. So just be aware of that. All of the elements in row 4 of the periodic table, they have 4 electron shells, they do, absolutely. But what's happening here is after we've filled our 4S, we jump back up, so to speak, and we fill in our 3D subshell. So just be aware of that. Mathematically, when you look at it, the 4S subshell here has a lower energy value than the 3D. And let's have a look at this diagram on the bottom left. Some of you might have seen this before. Order of filling, you put all of your S your S subshells here, your P's, D, and F, and then we draw arrows to the bottom left, shows us our order of filling. Uh, so if we have a look at the 3P, which I've already told you is the, the, the aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, rather than jumping to our 3D, 
because remember that's a higher energy level, we actually go back and fill our 4S first. Then we can go back to 3D and then to 4P and to 5S. So you'll see, even though it doesn't seem to make sense, we're jumping all over the place on the periodic table when we're adding our electrons, it does hold mathematically, if you look at it like we have in the bottom right diagram down here, it does hold mathematically that we fill the lowest energy level first. And a classic example is filling the 4S subshell before we fill the 3D subshell. So there's a couple of other rules that we're going to look at in a second. Uh, we're going to look at Hun's rule and we're going to look at the Pauli exclusion principle. Um, and we'll look at those when we start looking at orbital diagrams. But you know what? Let's just do an example here uh, of neon and we'll do the electron configuration using the periodic table. So the periodic table is the easiest way to work out your electron configuration for any element. It's the easiest way of doing it. Uh, so we've got our periodic table here separated down to S, D, P, <coughs> excuse me, and F. Um, obviously your periodic table probably won't look like this in the exam, but you can still use it the same way and it becomes pretty easy to, to work out configuration. So let's have a look. Neon, uh, it's number 10. So let's have a look and count these off. We have 1S2. So we know we've got, we've got neon is 1S2. We'll tick those off. 2S2. Uh, where's neon up here? So we have two, we're in the P block now, 2P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 2P, 6, and that's it, we're done. Uh, let's have a look and do, you know what, let's do silicon while we're here, SI, just use the periodic table, uh, 1S, 2, 2S, 2, tick those off, 2S, 2, then move it over to 2P, 2P, 6, so it's the same as neon, 2P6, jump down to the third level, 3S2, 3S2, jump across to 3P, what are we doing, silicon, 1, 2, there we go, so it is 3P2, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the easiest way to work out your electron configuration using the periodic table. Um, now, the other thing we're going to look at too, so if I couldn't do this, does this work? Uh, there we go, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, which is neon, the one we just worked out. The next thing we're going to start looking at are your orbital diagrams. And this will go into Hun's rule as well and the Pauli exclusion principle. So an orbital diagram, um, we use boxes to represent our orbitals. Now let's do an orbital diagram here for neon. We have 1s2, so this would be 1s. We have two electrons, so we put two arrows pointing in different directions here. <coughs> Excuse me, an up and a down arrow. It's not the neatest, but there you go. Now, Hun's rule is that we fill singly, then doubly. That will come into play in a second. The other one we want to look at here is the Pauli exclusion principle. It states that no two electrons can occupy the same position or state. So if we have two electrons in one orbital, we, one must have an up spin, the other one must have a down spin and they, therefore they can uh, occupy the same orbital. So Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons can occupy the same position or state. If we have two electrons in the same orbital, one has an up spin, the other has a down spin. Now we go along to, we'll draw in another box here, and we're now looking at the 2s. 2s subshell, that's full because we have 2s2, so we have an up and a down arrow here. Now we move along to the 2p6. Remember there are three orbitals in the 2p subshell. We have six electrons, you can see here 2p6 because it's a noble gas configuration. So these are all going to be full. And there you go, there's your orbital diagram for Neon. I'm just going to reveal this one here. It's a little bit neater, but it's the same deal. We have a 1s, 2s, and a 2p. It's a noble gas configuration, and there you go. All of those orbitals are full. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so Pauli exclusion principle relates to the fact that if they're going to occupy the same orbital, one has an upspin, one has a downspin. Now let's look at Hun's rule here. 
you need to fill singly, then doubly. And I'm just going to show you this diagram here and show you what that means. If we had to draw um, this particular element, so well, let's work out what it is. It's 2s2, 2p2, 2s2, 2p2, it's carbon. So if we were doing carbon, um, this on the right is incorrect. And the reason is, you can see here, right there, they've actually got two electrons in one orbital, but there are two spare, so to speak. There are two spare orbitals here. Hun's rule says that you need to fill singly, then you need to fill, uh, fill doubly. So in this case, this is the correct way of doing it. We would fill our electrons into these orbitals by themselves, then we would come back and double them up. So if I had to add more in here to this particular orbital diagram, I'd put my next uh, electron here. Once they're all full, I've got three, uh, well, I've got one on each of the three, then I'd go back and put my downspin electrons. So the Huns rule says you fill singly, then you go back and fill doubly. Don't fill double here in one orbital if there are blank or there are spare orbitals you can fill. Okay, so before we wrap it all up, let's go through a couple of examples here. Uh, bringing together Aufbau principle, Hans rule, and the Pauli exclusion principle. We'll do some uh, electron configurations and some orbital diagrams as well. So here we've got nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon. You can go ahead now and pause this and work out your orbital diagrams and your electron configuration for all of those elements if you like. Come back and check how you've gone. Okay, let's start with uh, nitrogen. And I'm going to go through the, <coughs> excuse me, the periodic table here and use that to work out the electron configuration for nitrogen. So nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, 2, 2p3. <coughs> so nitrogen would be 1s2, 2s2, and what did we say? 2p3. Perfect. And if we have a look, yep, correct. Uh, the orbital diagram should be, and let's see if I can draw this underneath here, 1s2, so we should have up and a down, 1s, 2s, remember there's only one orbital in the s subshell, that's full. Then we go to 2p, p subshell has three orbitals, can fit six electrons in there. We have 2p3, so using Hun's rule, we're going to fill them singly. We're not going to double them up just yet. And using the Pauli exclusion principle, anything that is doubled up, uh, we need to give opposite spin. So, one, two, three. Well, that's it. We're full. So, we have orbital symmetry there. And if we have a look at a neater version, that's what we're looking at there. So, we've used all three principles to work out the electron configuration and fill out correctly our orbital diagrams. Uh, let's have a look at oxygen. Oxygen should be, well, one more. It should be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Correct. And you can see here we've gone back after we've filled singly. We've gone back and we're starting to double up our first orbital here in the 2p. Fluorine will be 2p5. 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Correct. And we've added one more electron to the, the center orbital here. So it looks like we're one electron away here from having a full... Uh, second shell, which would be 2p6, and lo and behold, that's a neon. There you go, that's the uh, electron configuration there for a noble gas. All orbitals are full in that particular shell. Okay, so let's um, let's just summarize what we've done so far. We've looked at uh, the Aufbau principle, uh, our order of filling. Order of filling of electrons into these shells and subshells must be from the lowest energy level first, and then we can uh, start filling in the higher energy levels, and just be aware of that, uh, well, I, I say anomaly, but it's not. It actually holds true. But remember, the third row of the periodic table does have a D subshell, but the 4S is actually a lower energy level. So if the 4S gets filled up first, then we go back to the 3D. So order of filling is the Aufbau principle. Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons can occupy the same position or state. This means that electrons in the same orbital must have opposite spins. Hun's rule describes how to arrange electrons when a P or D subshell is not full yet. 
every orbital in a subshell is singly occupied before any orbital is doubly occupied. So again, like we've seen, incorrect. You've actually doubled up the number of electrons in this particular orbital when you have spare ones here that need to be filled first. This is the correct way of that particular notation. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, so 2p6, we're looking at carbon. Uh, that's the correct way. And that's uh, relating back to Hun's rule. Hopefully that uh, gives you a little bit more confidence in working out your electron structure and using those three principles and rules in order to uh, complete orbital diagrams, use the periodic table to work out electron configuration and to write your electron configuration uh, correctly as well. And hopefully too, to explain why the D subshell, the 3D subshell is in the fourth row of the periodic table. Hopefully that's uh, explained it a little bit as well.